So the population in my town normally is around 28 to 30,000 people. It's a small market. Not as small as some, definitely not as large as many. And that definitely introduces challenges when it's time when you're trying to earn money. I will say, however, that my, my market is fairly affluent as well. So we do pretty good because a lot of people can afford to order out, and so they do. So when it comes to food delivery, or even when it comes to rideshare, they can afford the rides. They can afford to pay the surge prices. Uh, there's a small college in my town. So there are things that kind of affect the population and make the population go up and down. And there are certain factors that make my market, even though it's small, fairly decent, where it's not hard for me to earn $25 to $30 an hour. It really isn't. I don't even, sometimes I don't even have to implement any strategies and I can earn $25 an hour. I can just take everything and make $25 an hour. But one interesting thing that happens for eight weeks in the summer is we have horse racing track. And people come from all over the US and the world to watch horses race in my town. Uh, that makes the population go from about 28 to 30,000 people to roughly 75,000 people. On the premier week, it triples. So we're looking at close to um, 80,000 people, 90,000 people. And that provides some very, very significant opportunities, both for me and for people outside of my town because people come in from out of town other ride share drivers come in from out of town and of course most ride share drivers are also doing uh, food delivery these days and so but even then the market is still pretty strong we're still going to see surges throughout the day the good thing is there's more people in town that want your services and a lot of times, especially for rideshare, you can do a bunch of short, quick rides. I mean, literally, I have done five rides in an hour. And because people didn't want to walk, you know, a mile. And so I pick someone up a tenth of a mile down the road. I drop them off a quarter of the mile. I got to pick somebody up, take them another mile down the road. Uh, it, it's just, it's been, it's been pretty insane at times. And food delivery is typically off the chart because you're delivering to people who can afford to pay $400 a night for a hotel or uh, $800 a night for an Airbnb and these people they they tip well they really do they tip well because they're on vacation they're here to enjoy themselves if they were at the track and they won money because they they hit it big with betting you can bet you're gonna get some great tips from those people so it has really been uh, very profitable in the past last year I did pretty good of course the years when the track was closed because of the pandemic uh, there was nothing to be done about that so I want to kind of address two issues with with that setup the first thing I want to talk about are the challenges of dealing with increased volume because everyone thinks, yeah, we want, we want to deal with surge. We want increased volume. We want more passengers. We want more people who want their food delivered, etc., etc. And while that is true, it can prevent problems. Parking is going to be an issue. Uh, there, things are going to be slower at restaurants because now restaurants are dealing with two, three, four times the volume that they normally had you have more drivers on the road and so it is a lot more congested than it has been in the past and you have people from out of town i don't begrudge anyone uh, coming to a market wanting to make more money a number of drivers will kind of pool their money together and they'll come on a weekend 
so that they can, you know, they'll sleep four to a room, pay that $400 a night, $500 a night, split it up between all of them, and they'll come away with some good cash. And, and I have no issue with that. The issue I have is when people who come in from out of town don't let people know that they're from out of town. So people get asked, oh, can you take me here? Can you drop me off here instead? Can you do this? Can you do that? And now all of a sudden, those of us who are local, we get the shaft. Uh, there, people get upset because someone didn't wait for them or uh, didn't pick them up. I'm going in the car wash here, so let's, uh, let's, let's take a pause here. So back to drivers from out of town. So I typically try to stay in in kind of my little little town and drive. It's where I'm the most comfortable. I think it's where I'm most safe, where I'm safest. And on occasion, I do end up in a larger city uh, south of me. And people will ask me to take them here instead or do I know where such and such is or something like that? And I just tell them, I, I politely tell them, you know, I'm sorry, uh, I, I don't typically drive here and so I'm not comfortable doing that. And 99% of the time, they are very understanding of that. So if you go into a market, because with this is the way upstate New York works, if you don't know, if you're not in the five boroughs, you can drive in the rest of the state. So someone from Rochester can come all the way over to my market and drive here and not know anything about this market and drive. And honestly, they'll do fine because the money's that good. Um, but what they won't do fine is on the customer service side of things. And so what they won't say to, the pers to their passenger is, look, I'm sorry, uh, I'm not from this area and I'm not really comfortable doing that because I, I don't know how to get there or, or whatever. Uh, or, you know, someone will ask them to make a, especially a local, will ask them to, you know, make a turn somewhere else instead of where the directions show them, and they just get all upset about it and like, no, I'm only going to follow what's on here. Just say, look, I'm sorry, I'm from out of town. I I'm not comfortable doing that. I'm just going to follow the directions. Just be polite. Because what happens is the next time that person gets in my car, <laughs> because this happens on our, on on the regular, this happens. Uh, the person gets in and says, "Oh my gosh, I couldn't believe it! This person wouldn't even pull into my driveway, or uh, they said that they could only follow the directions uh, in in the app, or uh, they were so rude to me." Basically, you're making all of us look bad when you do something like that. Just if it's not a safety issue and you don't have to be really assertive, just be polite. Just be polite. Some advice that I would give for people who, who are going to come in, come in from out of town into a market like mine. If you're wondering, it's Saratoga Springs. You all should know that. I, I, I've mentioned that before. It's Saratoga Springs. So just... Just try to consider those of us who have to drive here for the rest of the year um, or for the next week when you're not here and, and be polite to the passengers. Uh, I find that 90% of the time, most of the passengers don't have an issue with that. They might complain a little bit if you say, oh, well, why are you driving here if you don't know where you're going? You know, I, I've had a couple of those. Uh, it's happened in, in, in Albany, it's farther south than me. But just be, just, just be kind. Be a good human. And the second thing that I, I, I want to talk to is, is, the, is the locals. So local drivers, when they're, you know, and I'm sure this happens in a lot of other larger markets as well, where people come in because there's a football game or a baseball game. They're trying to come in and make some quick money. And the local drivers start talking down the drivers that come from out of their out of the normal market. And I'm sure that happens in Buffalo. I'm sure that happens in Syracuse. 
Um, listen, we are all trying to do the best that we can. And like I said, I don't begrudge anyone who wants to come into a market where they know they're going to be able to make $1,500, $2,000 in a week uh, if they hustle, hustle hard. Um, I, I don't begrud begrudge them that. Not at all. Not at all. So let's not talk down to people who come from out of town. Like I've had a lot of people like, oh, this dude came in. He doesn't speak English. You know, crap like that. Or they didn't know where they were going, or they were rude to me. And and I try to, I, if the passenger is receptive to it, I try to explain to them, well, you know, they're, they're coming in from another market. They see an opportunity. They're trying to make some more money. And a lot of times they're not comfortable with, uh, you know, they're used to driving in their market, but they're not used to driving in this market, which is pretty different. So just know that. And also know that the market, if you're coming into this market, People here expect excellent service. They are not, it's not like a larger city where it's kind of like utilitarian. They want you to say hi to them. They want you to have a conversation with them. They want you to wait a few extra minutes to pick them up. Uh, I have been tipped very well for waiting an extra minute or two past the, past the timer when I could cancel. So my dash cam kind of cut off there. You know how it goes when you power off a dash cam. Sometimes that last file doesn't save. Anyway, um, what I was saying was be aware of what the market is like. Be aware that people expect different things in different markets from their drivers. And sometimes just extending your patience and your generosity, whether you're a passenger or a driver, can really go a long way. All right? My name is John from Ride Upstate. Thanks for watching. I'd love to hear what you think about this. Do you have any tips for people who go into another market and deliver? If you're coming into Saratoga Springs and uh, you're here for the track season, welcome. We love to have you and I uh, hope I get to drive you around. Bye.